buying plants for your garden can be kind of expensive. It's a lot cheaper just to start them from seed. And it's not very hard. Anybody can do it. Hello, hello, hello. So it's time for me to start my seeds indoors so they'll be ready to plant in the spring. Today I'm gonna to show you my little indoor seed growing setup and what I'm using for all of it. It doesn't take a whole lot of money or else I wouldn't do it. Uh, but first I've got some cleaning to do. So I'll start with showing you my lights. These are just regular four foot shop lights. Um, one of them came with our house and then I bought another one. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was pretty cheap, just at a big box store. I also got this timer. At the time, when we had a better provincial government, there was actually a rebate if you uh, did any energy saving things. So that also wasn't very much money. These are just regular fluorescent tubes, but they're LED. These are not grow lights. You don't need special grow lights to grow seeds indoors. That's a pretty big misconception and could almost be considered a scam. You really can just use any fluorescent that has very high lumen and is on the cool temperature. For plants to have vegetative growth, which means they're just getting bigger, they're not flowering or doing anything else, they're just growing, getting bigger, staying green, you want cool light, so not warm. Cool means more towards blue. So if you think about nature, during peak summer, plants are getting a lot of blue light and it's not until the fall when the earth tilts on its axis a bit that it shifts the band of light more towards red. Red light is a trigger for flowering plants to start flowering and also the amount of daylight. The shorter it gets, that's another trigger. So you want your lights to be on over 12 hours. So I have mine set for 18 hours. I have them set so that they're off peak, uh, which in Ontario here means that they're on during the period of time when it costs the least amount for electricity use. So anyways, something to look for on your lights is for it to be above 6,000 K or 6,000 Kelvin. The other thing is you want really high lumens. So lumens are the intensity of light. It's uh, like how bright they are, like the distance the light goes and stays bright, if that makes sense. Sunlight outside is like 100,000 lumens and lights that you can buy for inside your house don't go nearly that high. So you wanna get as high of lumens as you can. About two months ago, I switched all four of these fluorescents to LED strips. So there was no special hardware or anything like that. I bought LED replacements for fluorescent lights. So I found these just at a big box store. These are the ones I purchased. They're GE Sunshine Universal. T8, T12. So T8, T12 is the type of fluorescent light. You can see they're, they're 2400 lumens and this cool bluish white light, 5000. I would say the higher the better, the more blue it is, which is better for growing seedlings. And then lumens is the other one I was talking about. You definitely want above 2000. The higher you can get, the better. What that means, the higher the lumens you get, the further your plants can be from the lights. So if you just have regular fluorescent lights, with some generic low lumen number, then you have to raise your flats up nice and close to the lights or else your plants will stretch. They'll be stretching and trying to get to the intense light. So we call that going leggy. They'll kind of bolt straight up and then they'll have very weak stems because they're stretching all their cells upwards towards the light. So if you get more intense lights, you can just keep your seedlings further from them and it's a little easier for space and setting things up. It's one of the other things you 100% need if you're growing seeds indoors is a fan. That fan is completely blowing on this entire setup. It helps circulate the air, which will lower the possibility of mold and fungus growing. It will keep pests down a little bit. Uh, but the biggest thing is it makes your seeds a little stronger. If they constantly have a breeze they're fighting with, then they'll grow stronger. I'm just using 
regular potting soil uh, that I've been using in all my other videos. It's Pro Mix, uh, Pro Mix potting soil. You can use seed starting soil. Uh, the only difference with that is it holds moisture better and it's a little more fluffy. With uh, just generic potting soil, you'll just have to keep a closer eye on the water, which nowadays is easy. Just set an alarm in your phone. I just buy these seed flats like every couple years probably. I grab a bunch of new ones. This year I'm going with these Pro Hex ones. They're 72 cells. I mean 72 plants. Uh, I used to always use the uh, peat pellets that you add water and they swell up. Those work just as good. Um, I do find that the net that like holds the peat together, it doesn't degrade as it's supposed to. So usually when, by the time I plant them outside, I rip all the netting off. I kind of also use this little setup as kind of like a little hospital for any of my indoor plants around the house. Uh, say I've kept them in a spot with not enough sun for too long and they're kind of getting sick, then I'll bring them and set them under here. Like this fig tree, this was just a stem, no leaves, nothing on it. It did have one little leaf bud growing, which turns out to be this guy, which is now you know, huge, which is bigger than my hand. Uh, and that's just from putting it under this light. So I'm gonna get started here on sorting all my seeds, figuring out which ones I'm starting today and which ones I'm starting later. I'm gonna start with seeds that take six to 10 weeks until they're ready to go out in the garden. And then probably in two weeks, I'll start quicker growing stuff that are like, like tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers, those kinds of things. Mostly gonna be perennial flowers, maybe some annuals, we'll see. I'm just gonna fill up all these flats with dirt and as many pots as I can. All right, let's get started. So I'm just gonna start by pre-moistening the soil, just adding some water, mixing it in well. You don't wanna start with dry soil. You want to add enough water that the soil holds its shape when you squish it, but it's not like dripping out. It took me a long time, but I organized all my seeds by when you're supposed to sow them indoors, which usually will be like four to six weeks, six to eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks, or 10 to 12 weeks, or sometimes eight to 12 weeks. So the seeds that take the longest, that you're supposed to start the earliest, it basically means they grow a lot slower. So I'm going to plant all of those seeds in these small trays. They're uh, like one inch hexagons. And that means by the time I'm ready to put them outside, they won't be too big, anything below six weeks. I'm gonna start in these bigger pots because they grow faster. I won't have to pot them up into bigger pots before they even go outside, which I don't wanna do. It's just a waste of time. Well, it's not a waste of time, but if you time things properly and you're organized, it can work better. I am going to start with the longest germinating seeds. Another thing that you'll need is something to label. Uh, so I just got these stir sticks from the dollar store. So I have 28 different varieties of flowers. So I just have them grouped by how early you're supposed to start them. And I'll show you each one as I go. I had to bring down my laptop in order to look up what some of these flowers look like so I know how many I want to grow. A lot of, actually most of my seed packets don't have a picture of the flower. Luckily, when I was organizing my seeds earlier, I also was saving pictures of all of them. <coughs> all right. So now seeing what they look like, I'll be able to better decide how many I want of each. All right, group one worked out perfectly to be 172 cell flat. So we've got Zulu Warrior. They're three foot flowers with spiky wing-like modified leaves. We've got Blue Star Stochasia, which is a two, two foot tall plant with three to four inch blooms. Soapwort 
uh, Sapinaria, which is a trailing ground cover. Penstemon Twizzle, which I always want to call Pentastemon. We've got Shasta Daisy, we've got Blazing Sunset Gum, 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 G E U M, whatever that is. Next is Foxglove, and it is an Excelsior, Excelsior uh, hybrid, which reaches five feet, so that'll be at the back of somewhere. Uh, next is Campanula White Uniform, which is a ground cover. Eight inches tall. And then last for this group is Basket of Gold, which is Canary Yellow Flowers, blah, blah, blah. Eight to 12 inch tall, 12 to 18 inch wide. Part shade where it's hot. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Sorry for the drama, not really, but I just wanted to give you a little update. This basket of gold plant, I planted that on Saturday, and on Monday, two of the seeds had already germinated. That would be three days, and now today, it's five days later, and look how big they are. <laughs> Every single one of them has germinated. So that basket of gold, pretty good seeds. Another one I just noticed right now, Lupin. I checked that this morning and there was nothing there. I guess they're happy. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. That's it for all these ones, the uh, let's say 8 to 12 week uh, sewing time. Pretty much all of these, actually I think every single one of them needed uh, light to aid germination which means you basically just want to put it on top of the soil and then what I do is just press it in. You want it to have as much contact with the soil for moisture as you can. So the one thing that makes seeds germinate that's universal to all of them is moisture. So this flat's done. Now, speaking of moisture, I'm gonna do a little sprinkle of vermiculite on top because apparently this is supposed to really help retain the moisture and prevent algae, which I always have a problem with. So I'm just gonna do a light sprinkle. All right, now I'm gonna water them all in and then put the dome on and this Flat is done. We've got the humidity dome on. Now, like I just said, the biggest thing to help seeds germinate is moisture. Some of them need light, some of them need heat, but the universal thing they all need is moisture. So we keep a humidity dome on here to contain all the moisture and not let any moisture escape. But you don't want your seeds soaking. So you just give them a nice good water after they're all planted, put the dome on, and then I would say when you see like 25% of the seeds germinate, you wanna allow some airflow in there. So you could pop the lid up a little bit, just stick something under the edge so that there's some air movement. Or uh, with this dome I have, you can actually open these little valves to start letting air in. By the time the full tray has germinated, you want to take the entire dome off. It needs full airflow, or else they'll just dampen off and rot. All right, so we're gonna set these up under the light. And bring down the next one. Now it's break time. Okay, round two. Uh, all of these plants are six to eight weeks. Okay, so we've got 
perennial aster, pinky. Got Cupid's dart, which I had at my last house and I love, but I don't think when we moved I could find the plant in order to transplant it and bring it here. Or else I brought it here and it died. I don't remember. So we're gonna start new ones. Uh, creeping Baby's Breath, white. Gold Lace Primrose. Uh, money Plant, which actually uh, is called Silver Dollar Plant, probably more commonly. Band of Nobles Mixed Lupin. And then I've got Russell's Mixed Lupin. Jupiter's Beard, I'm gonna do again. I did winter selling, I think, with that one. But I'm also gonna do it uh, indoors. Burning Hearts Heliopsis, which is kind of like a sunflower. And then Helena, Helena Mix, Helenium, also kind of like a sunflower or a daisy, but yellow. Canterbury Bells. Cup and Saucer Mix, mixed colors. Black Hollyhock. So I'm gonna plant hollyhocks every year and there's a few other ones that are biennial so that means the first year they grow, they just make a plant and then the second year they flower. So if I plant biennials every year, then every year I have flowers. So I'm gonna keep doing that. And then I've got hollyhock happy lights. I've got amaranth love lies bleeding, which I grew two of them last year and they were kinda cool. So I'm gonna do more. And then Selvia Blue Queen. So this is a lot of them. This is the last of it for now. These are all the four to six week plants. All right, so I've got an annual Nemophila Penny Black. We've got a Stardust Hardy Ice Plant. Silver Carpet Snow in Summer. Uh, Cascade Mix Rock Crest. And Santa Barbara Daisy. So these will be the last of this batch. I actually ended up doing also three more winter sewing jugs right down there. I did um, floor stand white and violet gay feather, which is Leatris, I think. And then I did marigold in one of them to see what would happen. Here are all my flowers for this year. I will probably end up doing more. We'll see how it goes. These are the ones that I expect to get a lot bigger. So they get bigger pots. And that's about everything. As soon as I see some green sprouting in these, then I'll uh, give them a little bit of fresh air. I'll prop these out, these domes open a little bit, um, but I won't take the domes fully off until the entire uh, flat is germinated. Once they're all germinated, I'll wait till they have their first set of true leaves and give them a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of uh, liquid fertilizer, just generic. I basically just do a tiny squirt in that entire jug of water. With fertilizer, it's always better to go too little rather than too much. All right, that's about it.